to Excel Highway, your one-stop shop for all your spreadsheet needs. In today's video, I want to share with you an inventory management system you can build on your own. It includes using a barcode scanner for inbound and outbound deliveries. The file is built on Google Sheets, so it can be accessed from many computers and mobile devices. There are five sheets. Inbound barcode for reporting items that are entered into your inventory. The sheet has two buttons, scan item and inbound inventory. That's gonna take the entire list into your inventory. Outbound barcode for reporting items that are taken out of your inventory. Similar to the inbound barcode, you have the scan item to input items and outbound delivery to take everything out. Inventory sheet that's going to show you your inventory, your current inventory position, and the value. Log database. This sheet logs or stores all of your inbound and outbound transactions. The inventory sheet is based on this data, and you can use it for future analysis, such as inbound deliveries at certain dates, outbound deliveries at certain dates, price changes, etc., etc list sheet in the list sheet is where you translate the barcode number into a description and price this is a manually updated sheet and you can change it whenever you want let's deep dive into each of them and show you step by step how I built this inbound barcode the table includes a few columns the barcode number in column A and the quantity in column D these two inputs are going to be entered using the scan item button, which I'll show you shortly. Columns B, C, and E are formula columns that, are, that will calculate things and will be visible only after entering, or entering a row. This is achieved by the simple if in the beginning. If the length of A8 is greater than 0, meaning there's something here, then apply VLOOKUP to the barcode number, match it here in the lists and extract the item description and price. So if I have something here, this would be populated. Total price, once you have a quantity, it will multiply the price by a quantity. Here on top, you have a rounding total of how many items you have using count A for the barcodes and total quantity for column D, just to show you how many lines you have. The number of rows over here is something I use in the app script. It doesn't really have to be visible, you can just hide it. So let's deep dive into the two codes that we have here. The one, the first one is the scan item. Scan item, if you're not familiar with the app script, sorry. You need to go to Extensions, App Script, and you go over here. And here the, here's where the code is. First function, which is shorter and easier to understand, is the barcode input. Basically, in the barcode input, you're going to receive two UI prompts or two UI input boxes to enter the, scan, to enter the uh, barcode, scan the barcode, actually, and enter the quantity. So, function barcode input. Var UI equals spreadsheet app get UI. This will create the prompt for the, uh, for the user. Then I have two, func two uh, parameters here, barcode and quantity. Each are going to be separate, so there's two different prompts. So UI prompt, this is the question that they're going to see. Please scan the barcode. Second prompt, please enter the quantity. RSS spreadsheet app dot get active spreadsheet. This is going to show us the, the active spreadsheet. And source sheet equals SS active sheet. So these two lines will return the, uh, the uh, source sheet that I'm using, which is dynamic because I want to use it in different sheets. Row equals source sheet dot get range L2 get value plus four. 
So this is where I'm referencing this area over here, the number of rows. This is going to show me the next row where I input the information. So it's showing me zero because there's nothing here. And I'm adding four. So it's going to be row number four. So the code is get the range, and then you're saying the range, get the value that's going to extract the number, in this case zero plus four, so the number is row. Source sheet, which is our current sheet, get range, row, which we said is four in this case, column one, set value, barcode, get response text. So this is going to bring us whatever we input it in the please scan the barcode. Get response text, that's going to return that set value means it's going to input that value there in this specific range. Here I have a couple of ifs. So if the source sheet dot get name is inbound barcode or outbound barcode. And the difference between the two I want for an inbound to be positive quantity and for outbound to be negative quantity. Because whatever's coming in increases my inventory, whatever's coming out reduces my inventory. So source sheet get range row dot four so mean column D set value quantity which is the second prompt get response text. So essentially it's going to populate this column over here with whatever I input. Very simple but very efficient code. Let's see how it works. Click on scan item put number four as an example and they ask for the quantity, so I have two questions, two prompts. It's saving the four in column A, it's saving the five in quantity in column D. I get the description and price, I get the total price, and uh, these as well. And you see also that now this number is one, so the next time I input something, it will appear in row number five. Let's take a look at the second button, which is inbound inventory. Let's add another item very easily. And I'm using a keyboard, but this works with a scanner. So if you scan, a scanner basically is like a keyboard. It's another input. So you can just click on this and just scan your barcode. It will input whatever is over here. You can, of course, do this and dismiss if you don't want anything. So I have two lines here. So let's see what the inbound inventory does when you click it. Inbound inventory, basically what I want to happen is I want to take these lines and move them over here to the bottom, plus add a timestamp. Simple as that. You can see in log database I have another counter. It's going to show me the next row available. So row 27, so the next row is copied will be copied over here. And let's deep dive into the code. So again, I'm using the SS spreadsheet, get active spreadsheet. And I have two, um, two uh, parameters for the sheets themselves. DB sheet is the database sheet or the log database and source sheet as before that's going to be my active sheet. So it's going to work for both inbound and outbound. So database sheet is a, I'm referencing an actual sheet by name. So get sheet by name and the name itself in double quotation marks. The source sheet is the active sheet. I have three parameters I'm going to use from row, from column, and number of columns. This is going to be used for copying the data. So I'm, I'm from row number four, right? From column number one all the way to column number five. Number of columns, okay, so four, one, five. The number of rows, number of rows I'm going to copy. This is where the second usage I have for this counter, because this counter now shows me two, which is exactly what I need. I need two lines to copy. Two row is what I showed you before. That's the next next row to show coming from here in the log database. All right, so now I'm using this source and destination um, trick. So the source is going to be source sheet, get range from row, from column, number of rows, number of columns. So this is going to be from row number one through row uh, for two rows from column one five rows 
okay uh, this is just something I use while I'm coding is to have a message box and this is why it has the double slotted line so it doesn't have an effect on the code but this is something I use all the time to see if I have any issues with the code the destination is the database sheet is basically the same just the database sheet and the row is different still the same number of rows columns etc this code will copy from the source to the destination contents only true <coughs> let's now add the timestamp so declaring a new variable called date which is a date this function generates it as a date and database sheet get range two row number of columns plus one number of rows run set value date this will generate uh, for that same number of lines being copied right you copy two lines so I'm going to copy two cells here in the timestamp column and lastly I want to clear my sheet so get range 4 1 900 rows one column so this means get range <coughs> from row 4 column 1 or A for 900 rows and one column just to be on the safe side <coughs> this will delete basically these two areas here it's deleting one here it's deleting four okay so that was the, the two codes that I use for the two buttons and we created those two items let's click on inbound inventory and they will disappear and appear over here <coughs> with a timestamp. This is my local time. So you get uh, accurate information. The outbound barcode is essentially the same thing as the inbound sheet. There are a few differences. As you saw here in the code, if I'm in the outbound barcode, I want a negative quantity. And I also added an available quantity column here, just as a reference. All it does, again, using the length to only show lines that have data. So if the length is greater than zero, I'm going to use a sum ifs, basically on the log database, and show the available quantity. So this is just a reference for you to see if you have any issues with the inventory or not. So let's scan an item. So I'm trying to pull five, I have six, which is okay. And I can scan another item. And I can click the inbound, outbound, sorry, delivery. And the same result, it gets deleted and passed over here with a timestamp. So very, very similar to the inbound and the outbound. Same functionality, and I'm using the same app scripts just with a simple if to differentiate them. The log database, as we saw, this sheet saves all the database, all the transactions, and gives us the next row to copy the data. So you can apply some reporting and analysis on this if you want. You could understand your high movers or your slow movers and time between inventory, uh, inbound or outbound, all these kind of things. The inventory sheet itself is just a pivot table, very simple. You just select these columns, click on insert, pivot table, new sheet, and then just drag whatever you want. I like to take out the show totals, make it flat. And I can put the quantity here and the values and the total price. I can sort by the sum of quantity or by the sum of total price and descending. So I have my highest inventory over here. So that's how I built the inventory sheet out because we don't need it anymore. Lists, 
This is a simple table that we use. We can use to translate the barcode number to the item description and the price. Now what's nice about this is that the log database, the price is frozen. So you can, one solution would be that you would have to enter the price every time you input it, uh, use the scan. But using this, you can just make a change and if now the price is 1200 next time you input it, you will see that this line will generate with 1200 So that's also nice to use. That's about it. That's how you can build the, the, um, the file itself. Um, so um, just a quick recap. You have the inbound barcode where you scan items. And then you can just inbound them into your inventory outbound inventory the barcode does the same functionality inventory sheet shows you what you have log database tracks all the transactions and list is where you translate it hope you enjoyed this video if you did please hit that subscribe button click on like leave a comment and I'll see you next time